No spark now. There we go. Here's an overdue update on the teardown of the hider. So last November after we got it in here, I attempted to get it running with uh, not much success. We had it run for maybe five seconds, started tearing into it a little bit, found that we had really low compression in a couple of the cylinders and just got right after it. I didn't take any video of any of the tearing down because I was just in a hurry to get some of these parts out and it is such a greasy mess that I would just constantly be, you know, cleaning, getting cameras dirty and stuff. So we'll uh, get right into it here. So this whole assembly comes out the bottom, but I ended up pulling the blocks off up the top because I wanted to get them off to a shop and get working on those and make sure that if we need to get them sleeved, I can get that going. And then I have a lot of cleanup to do here and we need to have the taper measured and everything before I can get rings and everything ordered. Here's what that monster looks like. Look at the size of the rings on this. And you'll notice it looks like lap joints you notice that this one's got one of the tabs busted off. Number three and number two both had the top compression ring cracked, and there is a whole lot of uh, clearance issues. I mean, the gap is huge on these. A lot of unusual design in here. One example of that, typically the wrist pins are held in with snap rings on the end. The top of the connecting rods in this engine are split, and then the wrist pin is machined and it has a bolt that goes through and locates it and keeps it from sliding out. So you slide that in with the bolt out, the bolt retains it, and then they hammer a fold-over lock over it. Haven't seen that before. Kind of interesting. Kind of got to figure it out as you go. There's no uh, manual I have for this thing. Some of these other parts are off already. The Magneto's off to Rudy's, getting rebuilt. I should have that back in a few weeks water pump and things. I've taken little clips um, of some of the parts before I got them out of here, but I don't have a, a lot of it. I'll stitch some pictures and stuff together. I've already got some new parts. If you'll notice the condition of this flywheel or the friction disc on it. I've already uh, talked to the guys at Paper Pulley and got a brand new one here ready to go in. Biggest headache is cleaning all this stuff because it is just filthy. So I got uh, some pretty brass pieces. I gotta get the rest of the pistons, the rotating assembly out and check all the BAB bearings. It's pretty interesting looking at how crudely some of the stuff was cast. For example, if you look at this knob, you can see how it's like fatter on one side and skinnier on the other. Like right here is thinner than it is over here. It's a lot of imperfections. Kind of makes it gives a character. This is the intake that goes to the carb. You can just see how they never really even cleaned it up. Something else found pretty interesting in here was that this tractor had roller lifters. So I'm guessing them roller lifters, they did that because of the poor oiling where if they put just standard flat tappets in there, it'd probably wipe the cam lobes off. So these guys Notice here they have a little slot in them. So these drop in from the top within the block and then they have little pins that keep them from twisting. So then the only means of oiling these is they have those uh, dipper pans in there and so those rods would sling oil up onto the cam and then lube the roller. How the oiling system on this tractor works is, so you got your cam that runs off the front gear train here. I'll show you some of the gears here shortly. Runs straight throughout the end of the block in this brass housing. You'll see there's a shaft that goes down. It's all external. So when that spins over, you can visibly see this shaft spin. 
and then that goes down. You can see there's like copper that goes into the oil pan and it pulls oil up out of the bottom of the pan. And I don't have very good light here, but there's uh, oil pans in the, there's dipper pans in the oil pan. And all that does is it pumps the oil up and keeps those full and then the rods splash into it. And that's their elaborate oiling system. All bearings are Babbitt. If you're not familiar with those, those are like poured. They're not insert. So when it times, comes time to redo them, you actually have to have somebody melt the bearing and pour it. But as you can come in here, you can see uh, there's shims in between the cap and the rod. And as they wear, what they would do is they just pull the shims out to keep them tight. So you could run a motor a while, pull those shims out, get it back into spec and run it. And then when you're out of shims and it was wore out, you'd have to repour it. So I got a lot of shims in there yet. So hopefully the Babbitt's in good condition. The governor was one of the pieces in here that was really badly damaged. So here's the cam gear. Kind of looks like they built this as an afterthought. So they probably cast this, you know, like the rest of them. You can see that they machine these holes out afterwards so they had weights that go in the back they go through like this one on each side and we have this assembly that goes over the top of it so you have the other one on the other side and then those weights you pin these in and as you would speed up they would wing them out and then those would push on this piece and fit over it and it would raise and lower this and this had a thrust bearing on it and then that would push the rod that was in this assembly and then it would go through and push a butterfly right above the carburetor well this piece was really in bad condition i had to have this welded up and end milled back Let's see if i can find a picture of it it had big grooves wore into it. The rollers that were originally fitted in these dogs, you can see if you can see that flat spotted, like bad, <laughs> like it looked like it hadn't moved in years. And the pins that bushed it, you can see the wear. I mean, the camera probably doesn't pick it up real well, but I mean, you can still see like this thing looks not straight. And on top of it, one of these, the ears were completely broke off. So I had my 87 year old machinist cut the ear off, re-weld a new one on, you know, locate it with the other tab that was left, make new rollers, repin it. You know, just basically rebuilding all that stuff. Because, uh, I mean, it's, it was pretty war. It's going to be a job to get it all back together. I'll throw in a couple clips of uh, the water pump damage. Here are some more pieces that I'm taking off for repair. Here we have the water pump. Inside, there's like a bronze impeller. So you can see, it's pretty damaged. I was able to pull this apart. It's supposed to be a pin in there to drive it on a shaft that was completely stripped and gone. There's a shaft that goes through the front cover. It goes through the water pump, through a block to hold it, and then drives a magneto. And these water pump castings, you can see the bushing in there, there's a hole. This follows up to a grease cup. It's supposed to be able to lube the shaft. If you look in this one, see where the hole is? See where the cup is? That shaft was, uh, pretty damaged but on this whole thing everything has to be repaired or remade and pretty much anything that has a pivot point is war you can see here on that pin how war that is here's a mount so basically anything that moves needs to be rebushed or repinned and this lever was in this front cover and what that does is it it's the governor. It pushes off on the cam gear, there's weights, and then that goes through and it pulls a butterfly in the carb, or above the carb in the intake. Here's the idler gear. 
This cam gear is in really good condition. Uh, this idler gear, you can see the pitting here. I don't know. It's borderline looking, you know, trying to decide whether you have new gears made or not. It could get pretty expensive, but you can see the what chip they are. And then the drive for the magneto and water pump. Uh, it doesn't look too good. It has a couple uh, ends knocked off. I mean, we're dealing with stuff that's over 100 years old. So that's the challenge. There's no parts. It's something else. I'll show you a couple other things that are kind of unique. That thrust bearing that was on the top of the governor has got like a brass ring and this is where they got the ball bearings. I've never seen one like that. It's like a brass spring in there. Never taken apart a newer engine and seen that. They had to make a tool to pull, pull those valve port plugs out. Kind of crude, but it worked because I couldn't even think of a wrench name to try to find one on eBay. Valves are all the same size. Some are in really nice shape. Some are really pitted. I hope there's enough meat on these that we don't have to make new ones. But that's the progress. I'll throw a couple clips in from uh, some of the parts I was taking to the shops as before I was taking them off. Figured I'd shoot a short clip of these blocks before I head off to the machine shop with them. So this is a headless engine. There's no cylinder head that comes off. It's all combustion chamber. Everything is cast into one piece. So there's plugs above that. That's actually the top of the piston. Here would be the exhaust and intake valves. And that's actually where the spark plug goes in. They have these, they call them valve port plugs that you put on the top. The little one has priming cups and the big one's where you put your spark plug. And they were set above the intake valves. So this is all open between the valves and the top of the piston. So you have to pull your valves up through that. And on the side here, that's where they would drop in on the, through the block. You'd have your lifters come down. Here's the bottom view. Kind of looks like some of the stuff was an afterthought. You can see there's reliefs cut for clearance for the connecting rod. So hopefully these guys are in good shape. I didn't see any cracks. We're gonna get them cooked and then check to see what kind of shape these are in. It's a four and a quarter inch bore. Hopefully I don't have to sleeve it. I don't know, they're pretty old. Kind of a unique design. And uh, when we put it back together, I'll get more in detail. But right now, it's my goal is still to have this motor running in the spring and have it rebuilt. So we'll have more assembly videos coming. Then I'll have a record of all the work that was done to this too if I ever do decide to sell it or something, you know, proof that you repaired everything the right way. So this one will be a challenge.